Italy is famous for pasta. We see it all over the world. Tell us what we're going to see here. What we're going to see here, we have uh, two ways to make pasta, the old ways and the new ways. This is obviously the new ways, the new technology. Let's go see it. Here in southern Italy, I'm helping Megan and April learn about Italian food. Being students from the Secchia Institute at GRCC, they already know about pasta. But I wanted them to see firsthand the modern way Italians make bulk pasta before learning the old way. So we're here at Sabatelli with my lifelong friend Chef Nicola Conti doing just that. They use a new technique now, it's not like the old days, you know, it's a different method. This is to be quicker and uh, for uh, the evolution of the demand of the world starving, okay? Orecchetti is pasta made by quickly dragging a small piece of a long strand of dough. Nicola explained how the machines recreate what is typically done by hand to make pallets and pallets of orecchetti every single day. So this dough is going into the top of the machine. Yes. The strands are coming down. And it makes the little orecchettis. And then there is the little tip, 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 yes, tip, tip. It's just like a hand, you know, boom. The little years after it's done is because this is a production that it comes from made by hand, okay? So because by hand the world to drag something towards you or away from you is a strascinare. So this is strascinate because there is past tense. So when we do the dough with hand fresh, then we, we cut the little sausage, the little sausage dough, we cut pieces by pieces fast. So they're dra you're dragging it. Dragging it. And that's where that word comes yeah. from. The little ears of orecchetti are then brought through an intensive heating process, pasteurizing the pasta, preserving it by killing bacteria. So it's drying it. No, it's pasteurized. Oh, it's pasteurizing it. It's pasteurizing it, yes. And then goes to up there to another machine, which has got like small cases that they shake up and down, up and down, you know? until they reach the last stage, we'll go out slowly, and then the, the pass will be ready. Still called pasta fresca, fresh pasta, because still has about 25-30% of humidity until the last stages. If you want completely dry, we'll be going in these machines here at 45 degrees Celsius temperature, and it will be completely dry in matter of Five, ten minutes. After Sabatelli, we went to an even larger pasta factory here in southern Italy. Di Vella has been making pasta since 1890, when it first started as a small company. Now it produces a staggering amount inside their massive facilities. Karen from Di Vella showed us around the place. We're doing about 900 to 1,000 tons a day. We'll go upstairs, we can leave our things, and then we'll go into the factory, round the factory tour. To make pasta, it's so simple. It's semolina and water mixed together, pushed through an extruder, and it's done. And then dried, packed, sold, cooked, eaten. So you'd think it's terribly easy. I've been here for 22 years, 
And every time I come, I learn something new because it's incredibly complicated. OK, let's go upstairs and we'll go and get the overcoat. OK. On our way to the overcoats and the factory tour, we made a stop in Devella's lab. Before, during and after production, the pasta is constantly being tested here for the slightest problems, ensuring a high level of excellence. We have our own in-house laboratory where we study the grain, we study the semolina we produce, we study the pasta, the flour, we study absolutely everything, and we obviously also study our competitors, because you need to know, like, if you find a packet of pasta which we've never heard of before, it's nice, we like to know what our competitors do, like everybody does. We have a viscoelastograph, which simulates chewing, because the pasta, good quality pasta, after cooking, when, obviously, when you chew it, it's got to spring back up. You don't want it to become a mushy, stodgy mass on the plate. It's got to be able to spring back up. So the Vista elast Elastograph, basically, you put a piece of overcooked spaghetti in it, the pressure goes down, and then when the pressure is released, it calculates how much the spaghetti springs back up. And that simulates chewing, but obviously it's a very important parameter. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. The technology is always the same. Semolina, water, mixed together. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because what you learn in two years lets you transfer to a university at the top of your game. Because what you save in tuition is worth thousands of dollars. Because the hands-on learning and academic support are second to none. Because the honors program challenges you to do your best, while student life makes you feel connected to the world. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities. Here in southern Italy, my students and I are discovering pasta. Divella produces around 100 tons of pasta per day. We're learning how they achieve that incredible number. To become pasta, the dough is pushed through an extruder, making the pasta shapes. Divella has an entire room dedicated to them. Most of our standard shapes anyway, a Teflon. Teflon extrusion makes the pasta smoother, so you can actually better appreciate the bright yellow color. Having a smooth surface, it releases less starch into the cooking water. You've got a cleaner water. You can reuse the same vats of water time, time and time again. It's, um, and again, the product stays whole better. Isn't it amazing that they have actually invested time and thought into how it's going to eventually be cooked? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the real important thing here is that this family has taken the time and effort to make sure that from that end of the cooking process, they have thought it through. Yeah. Each line is fully 
computer controlled. Each line has its own computer. The computer controls the influx of water, the amount of water, the amount of semolina, the temperature, the mixing times. It controls every stage. The production is 24 hours a day, usually five and a half days a week. The technology is always the same. Semolina, water mixed together, more or less. Things haven't changed in the past 100 odd years. Okay. These huge production lines each make a different kind of pasta. The spaghetti line was particularly cool. Countless strands of dough would hang and then be cut by gigantic scissor-like blades. As Karen said, this is happening 24 hours a day, which is remarkable. This is a camera system which checks every single bit of wow. spaghetti. It reads. It's like you've got a million little people in there all looking at every stick of spaghetti and to check that there are no dark spots, no quality problems, no cracking. And if there is, if they spot a teeny strand with a problem, obviously, I then discard a large chunk upstream of the pasta. And it may come here. This may have been just one small brownish spot that was noticed and discarded. After being cut and dried, the pasta immediately moves to packaging. Incredibly complex and visually impressive machines work in tandem to pack and move the pasta into boxes and onto pallets. There are several lines, several packaging lines, 11 different lines here at the moment. So as the pallets come out, after being labelled, they can be read off people so the machine knows where to go, where to send the pallet, whether to send it right down to the end of the corridor where we have the export warehouse, or whether to send it here, USA. The vitamin enriched product has its own warehouse. There are very, very strict laws. So what comes in they're very strict, there's a very strict register about how much is used, what's been produced, and when it's sold to the States. So that goes into a different export warehouse. Karen, I just want to thank you on behalf of the college and of my students for bringing us to this wonderful, wonderful pasta facility. And um, we had such a wonderful time. We just want to thank you for your diligence and amazing tour. Well, thanks to Devella for their company. Thanks it's for nothing to do with me, but thank you for coming to visit. We're always really happy for people to come and it's, it's wonderful to meet you. And I know it takes a lot of trouble to come all this way. So okay. thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay. Ciao. See you again soon. Thank you, Karen. Thank <laughs> okay. you very, very much thank indeed. You. Coming up, I'm cooking with Angus. The lady takes, cuts a little bit of time, and then she drags this little orecchiette. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? I was ready to build a career. I traded taking notes in a classroom for hands-on learning. I found a program where I can follow my passion. What I'm saving on low tuition will pay off if I transfer to a university. And I know the skills I'm learning will build a better community. All those reasons make GRCC my first choice and the best choice.
I chose GRCC because it's close to home and I like the campus. Because it's affordable. Because I love the atmosphere. Because they have a great photography program. Because they have a great psychology program. It has the same activities as any other college. Because I can get my general classes out the way. Because it's quality, affordable education. Because, because it's close to home. Because I love Grand Rapids. For medical assisting. Because it'll kickstart my future. Megan and April had learned about the modern mass production of pasta. But here at the restaurant Il Piatto Fumante, they're learning about the old way. A couple of local experts from the restaurant, along with Nicola helping to translate, taught the girls orecchette. We're going to make orecchette. Tonight we've got uh, some semola and uh, some farina. Farina uh, is semola. flour, is flour uh, double zero, is uh, soft durum wheat, and this is semola, which is a bit rougher, okay? So they will mix 50 50. Okay. You create a hole in the middle, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. You Grande just add some water. Si a Flour and uh, semolina. Okay. That's where it comes the scale because the fresh pasta usually we make with eggs, mm -hmm. see? But this one is just made with, with water, so it's very difficult to hold in shape. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, allow to rest, dry a little bit, and yeah. cook it, see? Mm -hmm. The lady is older, and this is our daughter-in-law. Oh, okay. So she okay? passes it on. Okay, so it passes on from generation to generation. Okay. This is the whole idea, while we're still doing this by hand, you know? This will require a little bit of time, in order to have all the dough compact, they will shape in little sausages, mm -hmm. and then they will use a knife just to cut piece by piece, but and then they will, they will pull towards them. We will call them strashinate, mm -hmm. drag, you know, drag okay. towards you. That's the, the real name for these things. Va bene così, e poi possiamo anche cominciare questo. So that the dough now is ready. And then we'll start to do the preparation for the orecchiette, okay? They take a piece of this dough and then they will have to roll like a little uh, uh, sausages. The lady takes, cuts a little bit of time and then she drags this little orecchiette towards her and then she turns over the other side. They look like yours. And this is our, uh, uh, <clears throat> not national, but this regional uh, uh, dish, oh, okay. really, that established a long, long time ago. You, you, you drag towards you, mm -hmm. and then once you've done, because it's easy, you need to take the, mm -hmm. and then and you, then and then you, yeah, you turn the, the other side, and you create okay. a little hat. Okay. I see. Good, April, good, it's really good. Grazie. <laughs> okay. Poi ognuno trova la sua right. tecnica migliore, okay. non è detto che per this, forza bisogna girare. This skill così. doesn't come overnight, <laughs> obviously, you know, <laughs> these ladies, they're old and they're there <laughs> many years to do this job, so... Okay. So while you've exhausted all the dough, the job <laughs> is done, and then depends you, you, all the quantity you require. Oh, I see. Piano. Piano, piano. Piano, piano. Piano, piano. There you go. <laughs> You don't have to press, just, just drag slowly. Exactly. Yes, look. That's it. The more possible, the more you turn, the more you turn. This is good. What's going on here? What's happening? Orecchiette. You're making orecchiette fresh. That looks beautiful. Amazing. So we, are, we add a little bit of flour so they don't stick together, you see, because there is the humidity in the air of the water. That will, uh, you know, excellent, fantastic. Bravo, bravo. Look at that. 
Mi e të fëllë dhe ketë u gënja fërë dinën në. Francesco, the chef at the restaurant, brought out the finished orecchiette cooked with anchovies, breadcrumbs and chimichurri, which is a broccolini-like green vegetable from this area. Knowing the correct taste of a plate is just as important as knowing how to make it, and this was definitely the right taste. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. Girls, I have to go back to Scotland, and you have to go back to the United States. The funny thing is, there's a couple of American girls who got in the kitchen working. Really? Yeah. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because I was ready to take my future into my own hands, and GRCC gave me that opportunity. Because the money that I'm saving on the low cost of tuition, I'll use to earn my bachelor's degree. Because I'm making connections to build my career, because while I share my ideas with other students, I'm pushed to challenge my limits by my professors. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities. My journey through Italy teaching my GRCC students was coming to a close. Thankfully, we had Nicola as our guide through southern Italy and the Puglia region. We saw the food and the culture of the sister city to Grand Rapids, Perugia. Now tell us about this historic cafe. Uh, we are in the most ancient cafe in Perugia. When, when you speak to people of Perugia, Sandri is uh, in our heart. Here it is our stracciata al tartufo, one of the most famous uh, recipe from Umbria. It's lightly scrambled eggs with a season, seasonal truffle and the bruschetta. Bacio Perugina is only from Perugia. Okay. And it has been uh, one of the very first uh, trademark on, uh, on chocolate. Mm, wine is part of our style of life. We love wine, we drink wine, Every meal is with wine. We learned how olives in an olive tree farm eventually end up as olive oil. How old would you say this tree is approximately? This tree is already, I would say, over 150 to 200 years old. Wow. That's unbelievable. <laughs> it's amazing. They, they live far, far longer than the human. And we actually taste a little bit in your mouth. And then, yes. This they would be lowered and then the donkey would have something to... Tether? To tether, yeah. And then they would go around Walk around. around. The... And then they would turn this, these big wheels. We went to an olive oil press today and we got to see it being made. And how they use those giant presses. Yes. It was cool to see that. Yeah. It's just the plate, it's ready. It looks beautiful. From the dairy farm to the table, we discovered the craft of making mozzarella. You're so used to seeing it coming to you just ready, and now you can appreciate the amount of work and effort that goes into it. A lot of work. So when you look at a bowl of mozzarella from now on, you're gonna you're gonna really see. Look at that. Put your finger down to his tongue. I did. Watch your footy bites, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Has she been making this all her life? All her life. From 16 years old. She would have learned how to make it. You will get loads of flavor because there is the milk in the dough, there is the olive oil in the dough, and you'll see the flavor you'll get. And you're adding more olive oil. So Marielle is saying that she's happy to have us here 
that you really did very well and you love these specialities and are they good? Venturing out to the coast, we learned about the seafood in Italy's Adriatic Sea. Gorgeous sea urchins, and you can see the sea urchin roll right in here, the edible part. Do you just eat it raw or do you yeah, cook it? No, 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 just raw, completely the way it is. We managed to find this amazing market right on the seaside, and it's just absolutely buzzing with people. Uh, members of the general public, they've arrived, fishermen with their fish, and it's just people are flying by us with big old containers of octopus. And... Was it in your family? Was your father a fisherman? And was your grandfather a fisherman? That will, will uh, the little lemon and parsley will, will take off because the fish is going to be sealed, OK? See? Tum, 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 tum. Look at that. And of course, we saw lots of pasta. To make pasta, it's so simple. It's semolina and water mixed together, pushed through an extruder, and it's done. And then dried, packed, sold, cooked, eaten. That's where it comes the skill, because the fresh pasta usually we make with eggs. See? You don't have to press, just, just drag slowly. Yes, look. But it was time to say goodbye. Goodbye to Nicola, goodbye to Italy, and goodbye to some amazing culinary experiences. Well, Nicola, all good things come to an end, and this has been an amazing week, and we've just had such a fantastic time, so fortunately it's time to say goodbye. It's been a pleasure for me to have you here, to help you out in your education. Okay, girls, thank you. Ciao. We do the Italian way, okay? Grazie. Ciao. Ciao, ma'am. Ciao. Well, girls, I have to go back to Scotland, and you have to go back to the United States. So I'm sorry, girls, but this is the end. On my way home, I decided to visit Scotland's capital city, Edinburgh, home to the Royal Mile, Princes Street Gardens, and so much more including the Balmoral, a top-class hotel that is a Michelin-star restaurant called Number One. My old friend, Jeff Brand, is the executive chef, so I stopped in to say hello. Hi, yes. Angus. Great to see you. Great it's been, you, what, 25 years, maybe? 25, probably close to 25. Wow. We 26. must be looking younger, though. Eh? I think we are a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's all yes. the work in the... Let's have a chat. Yeah, Great so... to see you. And here we are, sat in Number One. Uh, we've had a Michelin star for 14 years now. Wow. Edinburgh's moved a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot busier. It's got more interesting, more cosmopolitan. Yeah. Your, your, your position is food and beverage now as well. Well, I do, I do a little bit of everything, yeah. But mainly, still the kitchen, you know. I love the yeah. kitchen. It's a great place to be in. The, you know. Yeah, well, we were travelling in Italy with a couple of students. You know, I thought to myself, when I'm coming home on my way to the island, I thought I would pop in and see you and see how you were doing and see some of the other guys in Edinburgh, you know, so... But you were talking about students. Yeah. The funny thing is, I've, there's a couple of American girls we've got in the kitchen working. Really? Yeah. They're working away there. Yeah. Wow. I'll just, shall I get them? Yeah. April, Megan, come in. How did you two get here? Can we go in and see some dishes now? I want to go see what they've been doing. Well, let's go see what they've been let's doing. Do they've been doing some great stuff. Come on. Next time, I'm cooking with Angus. Goes down like that in front of the guest. Just go like that at the table. Two haggis, please. You eat a chip with it. <laughs>